Take your Bible this evening, if you would, for our scripture reading, Matthew chapter 5, please. Matthew chapter 5. We have three verses we want to read together this evening. We're going to read verses 14, 15, and 16, and they're, they're not long verses. We'll just read them in unison together tonight. Verses 14, 15, and 16. It's Matthew chapter 5. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 14 of Matthew chapter 5. Ready? Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works And glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And let's pray together. Father, add your blessing now to the reading of our scripture here this evening. We thank you, Lord, again for the opportunity uh, to be here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the good music this evening and the wonderful congregational singing, the good number by the choir. Lord, we pray your blessing now on the special as it's given. Lord, once again, it'll turn our thoughts and our heart towards you. And that, Lord, you'll give us all ears to hear what you would want to say to your church this evening. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. How long has it been since you talked with the Lord and told him your heart's hidden secrets. How long since you prayed? How long since you stayed on your knees till the light shone through? How long has it been Since your mind felt at ease, how long since your heart knew no burden? Can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you? How long has it been since you knelt by your bed and prayed to the Lord up in heaven? How long since you knew that he'd answer you and would keep you the long night through? How long has it been since you woke with the dawn and felt that the day's worth the living? Can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared for you? Yes, I know that he cares for you. Amen. Amen. That's good. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer now as we come to the preaching of your word tonight. I want to thank you, Lord, for the Bible and thank you for the privilege that we have to hold copies in our hands tonight. And I would ask you, Lord, tonight that we would listen carefully and We would not take the words from the Bible as the words of men or the words of a man, but we would take them as they are in truth, the words of God. 
Lord, I pray you'd minister those words to our hearts tonight. Holy Spirit of God, do what only you can do in our midst and minister to the hearts of your people this evening and help us to understand what it means when we are to be the light of the world and to let our light shine before men. So bless our time in your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 5 here is the beginning of what's called the Sermon on the Mount, uh, the longest sermon recorded in the Bible, spoken by Jesus. And it starts out with the Beatitudes. These are attitudes that ought to be. And uh, this is how we ought to be and the attitude to have as followers of Jesus Christ. But soon he gets into what we are to do. And what we are to do is we're to be salt of the earth and the light of the world. And when Jesus gets down, I'm not going to talk about the salt necessarily this evening, but I'm going to talk about and focus on what He said in verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When Jesus said in verse 14 that you are the light of the world, okay, it's, it's very emphatic. And He's saying you and you alone are the light of the world. Now, if that's, if that's the truth, and it is the truth, then we have to ask ourselves when 50% of Americans uh, say that they've had a born-again experience, then we have to ask ourselves, shouldn't the light be a little bit brighter in our country than what it is? Uh, that certainly there wouldn't be so much darkness and, and immorality and, and wickedness as we see in our country. And so maybe someone's not being completely honest about whether they're truly born again or not. And certainly not letting their light shine. Part of that is probably because we've been led to believe that your faith and your belief in Christ ought to be a very private matter. All right. Now, sometimes when you're witnessing to someone or if you're out knocking on doors to give the gospel to somebody, that when you ask them if they... Uh, died, would they, do they know for sure they'll go to heaven? They'll say, well, that's a private matter. Or maybe you might ask them if they're saved or if they're born again, and they'll say, that's a private matter. And, and I try to be kind. Of course, I'm always kind. But I try to be kind and, and, and say, listen, I, I don't want to be, uh, I'm not being unkind to you, but you know what? It's not a private matter. It, it is a personal matter, but it's not a private matter. Uh, when Jesus said, by the way, when Jesus told us to go into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature, that means it's not a private matter. Uh, it's a personal matter. You must personally put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's a very personal thing. Nobody gets to heaven because mom and dad are going to heaven. Nobody gets to heaven because grandpa was a preacher. Uh, nobody goes to heaven based on someone else's faith. You get to heaven based on your faith. It's personal between you and God. And so you personally have to trust Jesus as your Savior. But the Bible makes it very clear that those who are going to heaven should never be content to go there alone. Uh, those who are going to heaven should never be content to go there alone. Thank you, alright? If I have to repeat every time to get amens, so we're going to be here a long night, okay? So, but you understand, let your light so shine is not a suggestion. It's a command. It's something that every one of us are to be doing. And I'm just going to give you several thoughts tonight. Uh, don't not going to keep you long this evening. But I want you to focus on that let your light so shine. And number one, the first thought I want to give you is this. We are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world, Jesus said in verse number 14. Now the Bible makes it clear we are in the world, but we are not of this world. So, and there's no doubt, is there? The world is in darkness. The world is in darkness. Darkness is often used to characterize the world and wickedness and evil. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 2 that the angels that sinned with Lucifer are reserved in chains of darkness against that day. And, and it's going to be a place of utter darkness where they will be punished. I want you to turn back in your Bible to 1 John chapter 1. Would you look there first, back with me to 1 John chapter 1. If you go all the way to Revelation, then come back to your left. You'll have Jude, then you have 3 John, 2 John, and you'll hit 1 John, okay? 1 John chapter 1. Verse 
Notice what John writes here. He said, this then, in verse 5, 1 John 1 verse 5, this then is the message which we have heard of Him and declare unto you that God is, what church? Light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Darkness is always representative of sin and evil and wickedness, and there's nothing of the sort in God. No darkness at all. Okay? He's holy. But look at verse 6. So if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we've we taught you here, walking means to take repeated steps in the same direction. Define walk. Take repeated steps in the same direction. So if we say that we have fellowship with Him who is in light and has no darkness at all, and we take repeated steps in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Pretty strong language. And, uh, but don't, don't get mad at the messenger. That's the message. I didn't write that. God wrote that. And John penned it for him. In fact, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 14 says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness. And what communion does light have with darkness? None. If it's dark and you flip the light switch on and light fills the room, the darkness flees. The darkness goes away. You're in <clears throat> 1 John. Go back to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John chapter 3. Most of us are familiar with that chapter. That's the chapter where Nicodemus is born again. And that's the chapter where we have John 3.16, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, that God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Verse 18, He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. But now look at verse 19. This is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. Everyone that doeth evil hates the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's why we know that Jesus is the light of the world. You can read that verse and you can take light out and put Jesus in there. Do you understand? This is a condemnation that Jesus has come into the world and men love darkness rather than Jesus because their deeds are evil and everyone that doeth evil hateth Jesus. Neither cometh to Jesus. Why? Because their deeds will be reproved. So Jesus is the light of the world. But, <clears throat> we know, Acts chapter 1, Jesus physically ascended back to heaven where the Bible tells us He sits at the right hand of God. So if Jesus is the light of the world, how is He the light of the world? He's got to be it through us. Christ dwells in us as believers. And so if He's going to shine in this world, we are the light of the world. We are the ones that have to let the light shine. We always have to let our light shine. We light up a dark world. You light up a dark home. You could possibly light up a dark workplace. Somebody says time to time, Pastor, pray for me. I think I need a different job. Everybody who I work with is lost. Well, what an opportunity. What an opportunity for your light to shine. And maybe God put you there for your light to shine. To see some of those People come to Christ. And so the light always shines brightest in the darkest place. And so it could be you're lighting a dark workplace. It could be your light in a dark neighborhood. It could be your light in a dark city or a dark country. And no matter how dark the world gets, God has always had His lights. Always. You remember back in the, in the early part of Genesis when it says God saw the thoughts and intents of man's heart were only evil continually. Ah, but there was a man named Noah who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He had a light. And for 120 years, he preached righteousness. 
to that nation, to that country, and, and was a preacher of righteousness and ended up with only seven other converts besides himself, and they were family members. It's all he saw saved. But he was a preacher of righteousness. He was a light in a dark world. When famine came throughout the land and <clears throat> throughout the land of Egypt and then throughout the land of Canaan, uh, God had Joseph there in the land of Egypt to see to it that he would take care of the seven years of famine and feed folks. When Ahab and Jezebel ruled in, in Israel and, and, and Baal worship was prevalent, God raised up someone named Elijah the Tishbite. Uh, no, no father, no mother mentioned. Uh, just comes on the scene. God put a light there for Israel. So He would stand upon Mount Carmel and he say, How long halt ye between two opinions? If Baal be God, serve Him. But if God be God, then serve Him. And he had a light in Elijah the Tishbite. After Malachi closes in the Old Testament, there's 400 years of silence. No one heard from God. No Scripture. No prophet. Nothing. There was 400 years of silence. And finally, you find in the book of Matthew, there came a voice crying in the wilderness. And it was the voice of John the Baptist. And God breaks the silence. And the Bible says, what was John? He was a burning and a shining light. Light finally pierced that darkness with the coming of John the Baptist. Let your light shine. President Woodrow Wilson told the story of an encounter which reflected the light of a changed life. He said, quote, I was in a very common place. I was sitting in a barber chair when I became aware that a powerful personality had entered the room. A man came in quietly upon the same errand as I had to get his hair cut and sat in the chair next to me. But every word the man uttered though it was not in the least moralizing, showed a personal interest in the man who was serving him. And before I got through with what was being done to me, I was aware that I had attended an evangelistic service because it was Mr. D.L. Moody who sat in the next chair. I purposely stayed in the room after he left and noted the singular effect that his visit had upon the barber shop. They spoke in undertones. They did not know His name, but they knew something had elevated their thoughts and left that place as I should have left, a place of worship. What a testimony. Our lives ought to reflect something different than what the world has. Because we have something different than what the world has. We have Jesus Christ. And, and if He doesn't shine through us, it's a pretty dark place. And the world has no hope whatsoever. We're always drawn to the light. So we're to let, we're, we're to, uh, we are the light of the world. And then let me remind you, number two, we are to let the light shine. And I could put in parentheses with that, do not hide the light. You know what Jesus said in verse 15, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now Jesus is saying we're salt and light. And, and salt, by the way, is a hidden but powerful influence. You don't see salt. You, you put that on your food and once it's on there, you don't know it's there. But you'll taste it's there. You don't know that it's, it's not visible, but it's powerful. But light is visible. Light is a revealing influence. And so we're called to impact the world that's around us. We're called to be the light of the world. But we, we, we cannot hide what we are. The Bible says here, and by the way, it's possible to hide what you are. It's possible to put the light under a bushel, so to speak, so that nobody knows and nobody sees. Why are we left in this world? If it's just being saved, then when God saves us, why didn't He take us out? Okay, you're saved, let's go to heaven. Okay, No, because He has purpose for us to be here. What is it? To be salt and light. We're to be the light of the world. And so, we're to, we're to be different than those who are left in this world. Listen, what purpose is there if the world is immoral and we're immoral? 
What purpose is there if they're dishonest and we're dishonest? What purpose is there if, if they do sloppy work at work and they do a sloppy job and we do a sloppy job? What difference is there if Monday morning comes and they're dragging in because of their darkness all weekend and their eyes are barely open and they're grumbling and complaining and the Christian walks in the same way? Huh? The Christian ought to walk in and be happy and smile and they say, man, what's wrong with you? They say, hey, we had a great Sunday. We had a great Sunday at church. They probably will never ask you again on Monday how it was. But they might ask you that one time. And, and, and just saying, there ought to be a difference. The light ought to shine. They mumble and complain about everything. We mumble and complain about everything. They only look out for themselves. We only look out for ourselves. They sit and complain about the, the management. We sit and complain about the management. There's no difference. You cannot will never impact the world for Jesus Christ if we're just like the world. The detraction is in the difference. And our mission is to be the light of the world. Now notice it says, let your light so shine. As long as I stay clean, and I stay keep the, 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 the way clear, I just have to let it shine. I don't have to make it shine. I just have to let Him shine through me. And you have to let Him shine through you. Sin is what clouds things over. We, we uh, usually, uh, during this time of year, have winter in Ohio. <clears throat> By the way, I'm okay with not having it, alright? Uh, if it stays 45 degrees the rest of the time, I'm alright with that. And uh, I'll shovel the rain instead of the snow, but... The, uh, listen, you know, when it, when it would snow and they, they salt the roads and as you drive your car and the spray comes up, you ever, you ever get in your car and turn your head and you get on, you turn the key? Now, most cars, you don't turn the headlights on. They're already on automatically. But you ever look and think, are these headlights on? Are they, are they working? Because you don't see much. And you know what? You get outside and you go around and look and guess what's happened? All that snow and salt and stuff has created a film over those headlights. And you have to get a rag and you have to clean those off. And all of a sudden, guess what? Bam, there's the light. There it shines. You know, when we go through life and if we allow the, the, the sins of this life and the, 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 the everyday things that we get bogged down with, you know what it does? It can cloud our light. And so we have to confess our sin. And He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us. He wipes it all clean. Why? So the light can come through again. So folks can see. So he, we can let our light shine. And we can let others see the light. You see, let your light shine. That means we're not going to live a light-filled life. We're not going to have the light shining without standing out. People will notice. When your light shines, people notice that your light's shining. People will notice you. They may not like you. They may not uh, accept you, but they'll know that you're there. They'll know what you believe. You understand, your, your faith, we talked about it this morning, if your religion doesn't make a difference in your life, you need to get a new religion. If your faith in Christ has not made a difference in your life, you better make sure you have faith in Christ. Because once you've experienced His grace, you're never the same. You're never the change. It changes you. Allow the light to shine through you. Now, how do we let the light shine through? First of all, we let it shine through in our walk. In our walk. Look at Romans 16 with me, will you please? Romans chapter 16. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then Romans. Romans 16. Notice with me verse 1 of Romans 16. Will you please? Here Paul writes, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church which is at Sincrea, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of. For she hath been a succorer of many and of myself also. The word commend there. He says, I'm going to commend her. 
I want to recommend her to you. Here's this woman named Phoebe. And she's in uh, just, a, just a servant. You know what the word servant there is? a word waiter. In other words, a runner of errands. That's what she does. She just runs errands. She gets stuff for people. She just helps other people. Where? Sincrea. A little town about nine, it's really just a village about nine miles east of Corinth. Little church in a little village, but there was a bright light there named Phoebe. And she made it into the pages of God's Word. Isn't that amazing? God said, Paul, pin these words down. I want, I want the world 2,000 years from now to talk about Phoebe <clears throat> and, and how she let her light shine because of her service for the Lord. When you walk, you have, the way you walk, the way you conduct your life, listen, every time, ladies, every time you serve in the nursery, you let your light shine. Every time that you clean the church building, you let your light shine. Every time you, you put things back together after we've had an activity like last night and, and, and New Year's Eve and everybody jumps in and puts everything back together and gets it ready, you know what you're doing? You're letting your light shine. And God sees that. God knows that. Let your light shine with your walk. But secondly, let your light shine with your willingness. With your willingness. There's only two people in the Bible that ever walked on water. One was Jesus. Who was the other one? Peter. There's only, only two that ever walked on water. Isn't that amazing? You know, remember the story? Jesus comes walking to them and, and it's a storm. And once they know it's Jesus, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, I want to walk to you. Now remember, waves are still coming on. The storm's still in, in full force. And Peter, before you know it, he's out of the boat jumping on the water. Did you notice that he didn't have any competition? Notice he wasn't fighting anyone else to get out and said, no, 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 let me. No, 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 it's my turn. No, no, no. Hey, he was all by himself. Maybe they were helping him. Here, let me give you a hand right here. Put your foot right there. We'll help you out. I don't know. But, but he had no, you know what? You what know, I like about Peter? He was willing to try it. He was willing to do something that no one else was willing to do. Don't you like a willing servant? You know when your light shines is when you serve, but you serve willingly. The Old Testament says we ought to serve the Lord with gladness. Not, not madness. Not sadness. Okay? Gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Be willing. Be a willing worker. The light always shines through the willing worker. It's such a blessing. It's a blessing when I, when I have to text Jeanette Anderson on a, on a, early on a Sunday morning and say, I need you to teach a class. And she says, sure, Pastor. What a blessing to have a willing worker. What a blessing when you ask someone, can you, can you do this or can you give somebody a ride? Yeah, I can do that. What a blessing when you come to church and, and somebody says, Lisa Chapman this morning, hey, someone's not here, can you help in the nursery? Sure, I'd be glad to. What a willing worker. That's when your light shines, is when you're willing to help. Your light shines when you pick somebody up that needs a ride to church. Your light shines when you're willing to help with funeral dinners or hospital visits. Your light shines. So your light shines in your walk. Your light shines in your willingness. But your light also shines in your witness. In your witness. Let your light so shine where? Before men. Let your light shine before men. It means you carry tracks in your pocket or you carry tracks in your purse. Are you willing to give a tract to someone? Here's Rob and his wife and Gabe and, and their family coming to church now. You know why? Because somebody had a tract with them and gave it to their son who works at Kroger. And now they're faithfully coming to church. God's, God's doing a work in that family. All because somebody had a tract available that she would give to a 19-year-old boy working. Carry tracts. Keep your New Testament handy. Be looking for opportunities to let your light shine. Whenever <clears throat> uh, Cindy was talking to us the other day, Cindy Lay, she was saying, you know, whenever God changes my schedule and it's out of the routine, I'm looking for the opportunity. 
Must be somebody God wants me to talk to. Must be somebody who needs a gospel track here. Must be somebody who needs a witness. And I'm looking for that opportunity. That's a good, a good idea. Let your light shine before men. Before men. Uh, take every opportunity to, to tell someone about Jesus Christ. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And so make sure that your light shines. Hey, our light shines around the world. Yes, it does. The light shines in India. And we're, they're, they're going to India here in just a few weeks. And the light shine in Uganda. And the light shines in the Philippines and uh, in Armenia and these places where we've gone with the gospel. But wait a minute. The light shines in America. And the light has to shine in Columbus. And the light has to shine in Grove City. The light has to shine. And it's going to shine. It shines through us. Let your light so shine before Men, that they will see your good works. So, it was American short story writer O. Henry that spoke his last words. I always thought it was just a candy bar, but I guess he was a writer. He spoke his last words, and here's what he said, quote, Turn up the lights. I don't want to go home in the dark. You know what? It's our responsibility to see that no one goes into eternity in the dark. We want them to see the light. And the light of the world is Jesus. Okay? So we see it. We, we shine the light in our walk and in our willingness and in our witness. And then let me give you number three and we'll be done. What's the purpose? Why, why are we supposed to let the light shine? What's the purpose of it all? Verse 16 of Matthew 5. Let your light so shine before men... They may see your good works and do what, church? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Jesus didn't say, hey, you're going to let your light shine before men that they'll see your good works and say, what a marvelous guy you are. What a, what a great person you are. Oh, wow, what a wonderful Christian you are. No, 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 nothing about us. It's all about Him. Nothing about, well, they'll think I'm a good person or uh, I'm not. Listen, a good light doesn't call attention to itself. A good light just gives light. And others get enjoyment from it. Don't, 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 don't perform good works. When you, when you do your good works and people try to give praise to you, you better deflect that praise to God. Boy, thank you so much for, for doing that. Well, praise the Lord. Glad for the opportunity. Give God the credit. Give God the glory. Always the, the good works are that they'll glorify your Father's heaven. Glorify, glorify means to put in the spotlight. It, it, it means, as we learn in RU, it means to make God look good. It means to make somebody look good when you put the glory on them. You know what we're supposed to do? We don't do good works to make us look good. Because the truth is, what, what is there good about us besides Jesus Christ? He's the one. So we want Him to look good. And we want to give all the praise and the glory to Him. Somebody said, we're not called to be magnificent chandeliers for the world to admire. We're called to be that single bulb nightlight in the hallway to keep people from breaking their neck when they get up in the middle of the night. <laughs> you don't have to be the fancy chandelier. You can be the back porch light. Just keep on giving light, and making a difference in the darkness. In 1921, Lewis Laws, L-A-W-E-S, became the warden at Sing Sing Prison. Now in those days, no prison was tougher than Sing Sing. But when Warden Laws retired some 20 years later, the prison had changed into a different kind of institution. And those who studied the system gave credit for the change to laws. But when he was asked about the transformation, he said, I owe it all to my wife, Catherine, who's buried outside the prison walls. Catherine Laws was a young mother with three small children when her husband became the warden of Sing Sing. Everybody warned her from the beginning that she could never set foot inside the prison walls. But that didn't stop Catherine. When the first prison basketball game was held, she walked into the gymnasium with her three beautiful children and sat in the stands with the inmates. 
Her attitude was, my husband and I are going to take care of these men and I believe they will take care of me. I don't have to worry. She insisted on getting acquainted with them and knowing them and their records. She discovered one convicted murderer was blind, so she paid him a visit. Holding his hand in hers, she asked him, do you read Braille? What is Braille, he asked. And so she taught him how to read. Years later, he would weep in love for her. Later, she found a deaf mute in prison. She went to school to learn how to use sign language. Many said that in Catherine Laws, that Jesus Christ came alive again in Sing Sing from 1921 to 1937. Then, she was killed in a car accident. The next morning, Lewis Laws didn't come to work. Another acting warden took his place. And it was as if the whole prison knew something was wrong. The following day, her body was resting in a casket in her home, about three quarters of a mile from the prison. As the acting warden took his early morning walk, he was shocked to see a large crowd of the toughest, hardest criminals gathered like a herd of animals at the main gate. He went closer to them and he noted tears of grief and sadness. He knew how much they loved Catherine. He turned and faced the men and he said, All right, men, you can go. Just be sure and check in tonight. He opened the gate and a parade of criminals marched down the street without a guard the three quarters of a mile to stand in line and pay their respects to Catherine Laws. And that night, every one of them checked back in. Every one. And here we are, 80 some years later, still talking about her light shining. Let your light so shine before men. They'll see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let's pray together. Father, I pray you'll take our truth now this evening. Lord, I pray that we would simply let your light shine through us. Lord, help us to get rid of sin, selfishness, self-centeredness, the cares of life, cares of this world that so often hinder the light from shining as brightly as it ought to. Lord, I know that in a dark place, people always go towards the light. Lord, I pray that we would so live and our light would so shine that people would be drawn to Jesus Christ. So Lord, help us to be the salt of the earth and be the light of the world. Lord, I pray that the lights of the people in this room would shine brightly in 2019. That as we go about our daily duties throughout Grove City and Columbus, the surrounding communities, people would see the difference that Jesus makes in our life. And we can tell them about amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. Father, speak to our hearts tonight and help us, please. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a moment. wonder how many here tonight in the room would say, Pastor, if I died this evening, I know for sure that I'd go to heaven. You talked about those who know Christ as their Savior. I would be one of those. If I died tonight and, and, Jesus, and God met me at heaven and said, why would I let you into heaven? I would say, because Jesus Christ is my Savior. And if that's your testimony tonight, would you slip your hand up and say, that's me, Pastor, I know that I'm saved. Just put your hand up in the air. God bless you. You may put them down. Here tonight would say, Pastor, I don't know that for sure. I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. But I'd like to be sure. 
Would you let me pray for you? Will not embarrass you or call you out, but I will pray for you. Would you slip your hand up and say, pray for me tonight, Pastor? I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I'd go to heaven if I died. I think I saw most every hand go up. Now, Christian, the message is for you. Will you let your light shine before men? Will you let it shine in your walk, in your willingness, and in your witness? So that they can glorify your Father which is in heaven. So others can be drawn to the light. Nothing glorifies God more than when we bear fruit. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. You allow people to come to faith in Jesus Christ. I wonder how many folks here tonight would say, Preacher, I'm going to ask God to let my light shine in 2019. Preacher, the Lord spoke to my heart tonight. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Say, pray for me. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. God bless you. You may put them down. I'm going to pray, and then when I'm done praying, we'll stand to our feet. When we stand to our feet, our pianist will begin to play. If God has spoken to your heart tonight, I want you to respond to Him. Just, just come, take a few moments at the altar and say, God, let your light shine through me. If there needs to be anything, if you need to clean off the lens a little bit tonight, confess it. Let God forgive you and cleanse you. Walk out of here with things just as clean as they can be so the light will be clearly seen by all. Father, bless this invitation time. May your will be done in every heart and life tonight. And I pray, Lord, that as we walk out of this place and we go out into the dark world, the light will shine and folks will be drawn to Jesus Christ. Have your way now and may each one do what you're bidding them to do in their heart. And I'll thank you for it.